Uh, hello, my name is Janneke Sprunge and uh, I'm sitting today on Hero Flicka. Uh, she's an eight-year-old mare. Um, she's quite green for her age, but uh, I believe that she's very talented. And um, yeah, I'm very curious to see how far she can go. Uh, we are now at the competition at a 140 level. I think uh, soon she can step up a bit. And um, yeah, I will show you a little bit uh, today uh, how uh, just a normal training day can look for me and her. And uh, yeah, let's start. <laughs> So first I make sure um, yeah, I warm her up uh, in trot. And what I'm going to show you guys also is um, just some flat work, uh, including some gymnastic uh, cavaletti work. That's always uh, good exercises to practice every day without putting big pressure on the horse. Okay, before I start an exercise uh, with poles or cavalettis, uh, I want to make sure that I have uh, a good connection with my horse. Um, that means that I have a good uh, frame where she moves in uh, between hand and leg. Um, for me, it's also important that I have a good balance uh, with her um, head so she's not too low but also not too high and that she always stays well connected to me. Flicka is very a sensitive horse. She's very attentive. She sees always everything, sometimes before me. And uh, yeah, but that uh, means also that she's very attentive on the jump, uh, which I obviously am happy about. Um, so when I, uh, now I have a nice and smooth canter. Uh, which is not always easy to get with her because when she's tense then she can shorten her canter and it's hard to get it uh, open and smooth again. So now I feel quite good. Also I try to do some transitions with even bigger canter. My connection and the balance stays always the same. Okay. And then I take her back. Now she's pulling down a little bit, so I lift her head a little bit up. Now she's pulling down because it's hard from the forward counter to collect. They have to really sit on their hind legs and that's always a little bit more difficult. So I will repeat it one more time. I make sure she doesn't dive because she wanted to go down. She wanted to go down a little bit by herself. So I make sure this balance stays up. And still forward. Okay, that feels good now. Take her back again. Make sure she doesn't dive. Balance stays up. Always keep my leg on. So the hind stays active. Okay, that was better. I change lead one time. And repeat the same on the other side. I'm gonna 
and that feels good. So I extend a little bit the counter. Connection stays the same. My position stays the same. That feels good. And then I collect her again. Okay. Make sure the balance stays up and she stays always in front of me. Okay, good. Okay, good girl. So now I will walk her for a minute and then I will uh, do the same over the cavalettis. Give her and myself a minute to breathe. Mm. Okay, so then I pick up the work again and um, include the cavalettis. And make sure she's good in front of me and that I have a good connection. So that she feels framed and then she feels also more secure. In case she sees something scary, then she knows, okay, um, I'm well framed by my rider and I'm secure. Okay, that was a little bit too far off. <clears throat> now we uh, try again. I opened up a little bit too early, so so I lost her a little bit. Let's try again. Okay, that was better. still a little bit all over the place but I just try to stay connected between hand and leg and keep keep on going until she she settles down okay I was a little bit more deep but I just try to keep the balance up so she did a good jump, that was fine. That was okay. That was okay. Good. And as soon as she wants to dive, I take her head up again. So she really keeps pushing behind and she stays always in front of me. Keep your position and trust it. I also try to not pay too much attention in which lead she lands. I just try to balance her. Okay, when she pulls down, I take her up again. Okay, I always keep my calves on out of the turn so she doesn't lose the push behind. And that was the first one that was actually very good. You can see that she can get a little bit insecure when I jump towards something else. I just frame her again and show her that it doesn't do anything to her. And I repeat and she's okay with it. Okay, 
Okay, very good. Also, when it's necessary to do some adjustments uh, towards the jump, it's very important to do them smooth. Let the horse understand what you want. Very good. And I come between the two waters again, where she was a bit insecure. Just keep her connected. Okay. Okay, as a first step now, I really try to get the, the good connection, the, the, the fluent, normal rhythm. Um, but now in a second step, uh, I really have to try uh, to change rhythms, to do it in a bigger canter, but also uh, in a collecting canter, so that I uh, can switch between the pace of the canter um, because that is what we need in the course. Um, sometimes the stride gets long or a line is a little bit long um, but then maybe the next jump is a double vertical so we need to be able to get them back on the hind legs and jump backwards again. Um, with her it's not always so easy because she can get a little bit distracted like you saw before. Um, so it's very important that I'm very concentrated and I really keep her framed and balanced um, because sometimes when I don't pay attention or I don't uh, put enough leg and there I'm talking not about the spur but I'm about the calves that support her and um, if I don't keep enough uh, my calves on uh, she directly dives a little bit with her head and then she passes behind me uh, which is not good because then she loses the push behind so she always has to uh, balance, stay in balance, uh, keep the push behind and then the, the distance um, can be also a little bit secondary. It's so much more important uh, to focus on everything else and your position, keep the horse in front, you have an um, equal connection to the horse and you always keep them in front of you and then you will have so much more options. Um, uh, towards the jump to adjust your distance um, because many riders or maybe a little bit more the amateurs are always super super stressed for the distance and they forget everything else uh, and then it's also hard uh, to adjust the distances so what I try to show today is that everything else is so much more important um, around the jump between the jump before the jump after the jump um, so the distance actually becomes secondary uh, for now. Um, because in the beginning you could actually see that I was one time a little bit far off, one time a little bit I took a, a late decision, I was a little bit deep. Uh, but I tried to stay cool and because I had my frame and she stayed in front of me, it was no problem to adjust it. So that was uh, maybe also today what I want to uh, give further that uh, um, yeah, it's not the distance as a first priority always. Okay, now I try to do it um, uh, one more time and I try to change a little bit uh, the paces. Um, so I will keep explaining a little bit what I'm doing. Because that's also always important to not be afraid to take a good rhythm. So before I start, I would take a little bit more counter. Now, even if I do a little bit light seat, I still have my leg on and I keep the same connection. 
Stand on tower again. Keep the canter. You can see that I have a higher pace now. Also, when you have a higher pace at first, the horses can get a little bit lost. That was a lot better. So I tried to repeat the other one. Try to not get her long, even if my pace is a little bit higher. Turn my head. That was better. Much better. Okay. okay. I walk again for a second. What I will uh, try to do now is uh, take a, like again, like before, take a big, bigger space, eh, a bigger pace to start. So a big rhythm. That's also how we should start a little bit the course. But take first a good rhythm, and then we can always um, yeah, make sure the horses are in front of us and they're ready to start the course. So we'll do that now on the Cavaletti. I will start on the big pace. Um, but then directly after the first one, I will try to take her back, catch the second Cavaletti a little bit backwards, and try to let her wait so she stays with me. And after that, open again, uh, take the pace again towards the turn to the, sec to the third Cavaletti and then to take her back again to the fourth one. So we'll try to connect everything together. Make sure she's good connected to me. You can also sit down on the bigger pace. Turn my head again. Turn my head again. Take her a bit back. Okay, good girl. And open again. Open again. And let her wait again. Good. And open again. Okay. Good. And take her back again. Okay. Good girl. Okay. Now, like that, yeah, I can try to connect things. Um, I can also do that on a straight line. Uh, there is many different options how to do on the Cavaletti. Um, you can do it on a certain stride in between. And uh, now I was turning, but not too short turns. And I always make sure I'm settled in between, no matter if I have a bigger pace or a lower pace. And I make sure everything functions. The forward, the backwards, and the balance, and the connection stays the same and also my position, so she stays from my body, from my position, from my seat, so she stays always in front of me. So now we had a great workout, and she improved very well during the exercise, so I'm quite happy how we finished. And yeah, this was a exercising day for me and Flicka today. <laughs> yeah, this was a little gymnastic um, exercise for me and Flicka today also to make sure uh, we can improve rideability and um, also to make sure that she keeps pushing behind and I can uh, change between the pace forward and backwards and but her not losing the balance and especially not losing the connection to me and yeah I was doing small mistakes <laughs> um, but um, because also she can get a little bit distracted when you change the rhythm. So we try to work on them and I think we finished pretty well. So I'm happy about the training today and she's done a good job.
Is that enough? <laughs> now I'm warm. <laughs>